gentlemen, out of my Board of Select and Store Commissioners, meeting continuation from yesterday. Turn over to the clerk. Sorry.
how do we feel on you? How often did you say that you were you were going to be the delegate? So I'm going to be on the serpent. It'd be my name and John Sheridan. Right. On the uh, joint transportation. Okay. It'll be my name and then we'll need an alternate. We either volunteer. Now that's usually in the afternoons. So. I have paperwork here, Mr. Chair, and it says for the serpent it does not allow for an alternate. No, this is for the joint so we're talking about the joint, the joint transportation. The joint. Mm -hmm. right. Like I said, either one of these, you know, you can attend. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, would this be the appropriate time to bring up the liaison, uh, the liaisons to the other committees as well? Right. After we do this, then we'll do the rest of the committee next. I think this is on the agenda first, and then we'll do it through the other committees right after that. So do I have anything on often, or you just want to leave it open? Uh, what time in the afternoon, Mr. Chairman? Is that? Uh, it all depends. Uh, I think the last time was what, 2 o'clock? You know what day is it? Oh, it all Tuesday and Wednesday. I can do that, Mr. Chair. I make a motion that Mrs. Bailey be the alternate for the joint transportation about playing. Second. Mike had 
showed interest. So these are the committees, none of that, and these are what we're going to go by. So, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the positions that the current or the uh, senior members of the board currently on this list, that they're appointed to, the, the, the current list? This is current. Okay. And, and were they on these committees last year? On what? On this list? Of Some committees? of them they weren't. That's why I'm seeing Some okay. of them they weren't on it because they had priority picks. Okay. So, but I guess... I understand what Mrs. Begley is saying, and I guess my question would be, how was it determined that they would be on these lists? The chairman determined, we discussed it, they had the first pick. They took their pick. They had three or four picks, and then we had the leftovers. So now, uh, since I'm the chair now, we're, we're going to do the same way. We have to pick most of these committees, they were already on. I guess, uh, I understand what you're saying, uh, Mr. Chairman, but I guess my question is, when when did these conversations take place for, the, for these appointments? They didn't. They didn't? No. Okay, so then how did, how did we determine that these... Because, like I just mentioned, most of them had the committees already. Yeah. And when I appointed, like, the Marine Resource... Uh, that was Brenda Extra. That was Brenda, so... Sorry, me. No. I was Marine Resource. Mrs. Winslow, but they're a Wednesday meeting. I can't do, I can't do any meeting on a Wednesday any longer. Yeah, I think, okay. And the council on aging was Mrs. Extra. Karen. Karen. What? Over there? So, if you don't mind, we're going to, I'd like to get started. We down the list, and yeah, like I said, pick four, and then what's ever left, if no one else picks it, I'll just, I'll just attend, like I said, you can attend any of these, whether you're there or not. I think I'm, maybe I'm not being clear about my point. My point is that if, as chair, you spoke to each one of us individually. No, I didn't. Then how did you know that Mr. Holmes won the council on aging when Brenda Ekstrom had been? Because she had it. Right. Right. So I'm moving, as chairman, I'm moving Mr. Holmes into that. Yes, you're assuming he asked. No, yes. I did not ask. Well, I'm saying that. As the chair, no, no, I didn't ask. I'm asking for the question. I'm, I'm just asking. Right. So, Mr. Chair, my question is this. I, although that, um, as chair, you preside over the meetings and set the agenda. I'm not sure. Is it? Is it? Has it been policy? Is there a written policy that the chair determines who's liaison? There isn't. But if you go by Robert's rules, mm -hmm. on committee, the chairman and president has the problem to set. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that just as they had before, all of us had to pick what was it. So continue on. This is what's available. If you want to pick it, you pick it.
I'm sorry. And right now we should have a we should have a female on. On. Last year was Mrs. Extra. So. You're right. Right. We should have it because Matt's on. Well, Mary Ann's on. Mary Ann's on too. So. All right. She's the choice. It's at the top of the. Oh, I see. So there are no specific meeting times. No, there's the answer to the chair. Tom comes up and asks me to get up. Yeah, that's a very interesting So, do we have affirmative action? All right. I'm just looking to see if there's any conflict. So, shall I go first? Well, what are we going now? Affirmative okay. action. Okay, affirmative action. I'll do that. Commission on Disability. Want to that too? Mr. <laughs> so, Chair, first Wednesday at 12.30. 12.30, yes. And the third Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, at 6 p.m. Well, they have, they have two, okay. I they have two. This is Donnie was the liaison and Jim Newman was the chair. Conservation Commission. Right now, Mr. Baldwin. Mike. We're doing, Karen. They're going to get four, and then if there's any left over, so we're going to go to the last one. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yes. Let's see, uh, first, I'm third Wednesday at 7 p.m. Right. And uh, John Huntley is the assistant chair. Next one is the Mount Standish Forest Advisory Committee. Mr. Chair, this one meets on the last Thursday of the month at 6 30 p.m. Cranberry Experimental Station in East Wing. They have two numbers here, Bill and Bliss, who's the director, and Alton Puzzles. And that is on the Swiss. If you want to hold back on that, no. We like that. We're going to need to get out of here. It's 25. Okay, open space. There's a question mark. Yeah, right.
this is one, and I have no support on the same one. So if you don't, know, I will just continue on it. Maybe we can switch up one with that, if that's helpful. I could attend some. Okay, we'll yeah, that would be good. At least we'll have one of them. Okay. Yeah, I'll put Mike on that one. Affordable Housing Trust. I make a motion that we appoint Mr. Schneider, who's the board member for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. How does Mr. Schneider do? Okay. I'm welcome now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I second. Okay, so most of the committees have been done. We have two committees now. Mount Standish Files Advisory and the Plymouth County Commission. Second. Five zero zero, Mr. Chair. Right, and in fact, what I'm going to do is once we put it down, we're going to take a vote on all of it. Mike, which well, one? Well, no, this is a separate one. Which one is this? This is the membership one. That's not an appointment. The Affordable Housing Trust. We just took that motion. Right, because she's going to be the liaison. No. Well, no, it's a, it's a seat. Oh, yeah. I thought he was already a member on it. No, why? Yes. The Board of Selectmen has a voting member on the Affordable Housing Trust. Okay. That looks a little different. Motion made. Second. Seconded. Chair a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Opposed? Yeah. Four zero one. Okay, now we have the last two that's open. Miles Standish Pharmacy Advisory and the Plymouth County Commission. Which one? Mr. Chair, uh, we also have the Budget's Bay Committee. We don't have a, it was Mr. Pichette. Yeah, Mr. I think it's someone else. Was the alternate. I don't think we had any selector on that. So I don't, I don't know. The alternate would be now that Mr. St. Jeanette is no longer here with the shop. Shop now? Yeah, I think that was appointed by the, the TA. All right. Let's make sure we get it all straight. And then the uh, housing partnership advisory. It says all members. Are, it's all members of the board of selectmen. I've never seen a meeting yeah, in a year. And then, of course, Toby Wolf, I think she is all members, all members of the board of selectmen. Well, the ones I listed all layers on, so the rest yeah. of them, you know, it's open to all of us. Oh, I think I missed some. What was the, uh, okay, Shabbat, was going to do the, uh, the play, it was going to be on the list. It probably makes sense if I, if uh, Mr. Chair, if I did Miles Standish Forest, since I'm going to be liaison to Lionel Forest. Why? Oh, okay. The Plymouth County Commission Advisory Board. I can. I don't mind doing that. Nobody else. Okay. All the committees as a right now. And we have on the list have been spoken for. Would like to have a motion. This is this is Winslow. If I may, Mr. Chair. Yes. I've, um, I've been attending the Wareham Library uh, Board of Trustees meetings the past two weeks, and I'm wondering if the board might entertain uh, having an alternate uh, that would be. Uh, I'd like to be the alternate on that. Well, the board library. since we, this would be new for us to have an alternate on it, but you can attend. Does it make sense? Well, I'm not sure. Mr. Chair, is there any reason if we, um, regularly attended, not necessarily as an official liaison, but if we asked um, the particular committee, say I was interested, in, uh, someone else was the Board of Health and I, I expressed an interest, is there anything precluding us to ask for uh, minutes? Oh, no. So, I think that that would be fine. Um, for us to get Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, you know, it's, you know, my health has been skipped over the last year, so. Especially like the zoning means and stuff. A lot of times I'd call Brenda, mm -hmm. see if she could make it, and she just fills in for me. Mm -hmm. Walter's done it, Gary's mm -hmm. done it, Jane did it for me. Um, there's nothing. This is just to say that we have somebody on the board who's a liaison, that's all. I understand. We're basically there. But there are many, there are many contacts. No, I, I understand the role, but I, I guess because um, I had asked when um, I, I had expressed to Mr. Cruz and that I was interested with the Board of Health, so I requested some of their minutes before I went, so just to catch up and, and be 
for state funding for public libraries. And we just got news, and then I handed off to Mark this morning that the House Ways and Means at least has voted to level fund library funding at the state library. So that's actually good. I didn't think that we'd be saying that level funding was a good thing, but we are. So um, that's going in the right direction. We started a strategic planning committee. It formed in January. We had a, a group of stakeholders from the community that the trustees chose and, and invited in. And that has been moving along. It, the plan should be done in June. We're at the level now where we've actually chosen for service responses. And those are in the report. Um, the first one was to stimulate imagination and get people in to read and view and listen to things for pleasure, so to stop building up those collections. The second thing is to create young readers, and that would provide programming and materials for birth to age five. So that's really the preschool where kids go off to kindergarten. Connecting to the online world, because we have so many people who come in to use our public access internet computers for many people who use the public library. It is their only access to the internet. And the, set, and the fourth one was to visit a comfortable place that we would have a physical and virtual world for people. So those are being developed into goals and activities, and we hope to have a complete plan and a complete <laughs> So something for you to look to. We've had an intern from UMass Dartmouth who has been working with us in our history collection. She'll be finishing up in May. And she's been accepted to a graduate school in Washington, D.C. So she's leaving Lee Humphrey Library and she's going on to do an internship at the Smithsonian. So we have to this. <laughs> From the Lee Humphrey Library to the Smithsonian. So we currently have, well, as of the end of July, we have 32 volunteers. And they've worked a total of 1,233 hours. So that group of volunteers is still working. Some people leave, we come back, and we've gotten some people back who go away for the winter back with us again. So. And our fundraising groups, um, since July of 2010, we've received $11,050 from the Library Foundation and $8,433 from the Friends. Uh, another $2,073 was donated by individuals. And this money, most of this money this year was used for our book budget, but there were some things that were supported to um, summer music programs for last year. Uh, new board book display, DVD storage cases, and things like, you know, the Dr. Seuss cake for Dr. Seuss's birthday, and these are for our new team advisory group, the important things in the library. <laughs> okay. And the Library Foundation did its first ever in $10,000 and they're still working towards that. I believe they have close to $8,000 now. My friends brought back their ongoing library book sales. They have in the lobby. They're, you know, anytime you stop by the library, you know, it's ongoing. There's a money box. You can drop your funds and it's an honor system. And they've been having book sales on a quarterly basis. They have one, another golf fundraiser. You didn't come to many golf. Really missed a great event. They are doing it again next February. They will do it again on the home weekend on the Sunday. And they're talking about doing the murder mystery in the fall. Reading partners, we finished up the um, FY09 grant and we started in a TIM grant. The monies there were you know, 40000 for the year before and 47000 this year. That program services anybody 16 and older that's been out of school or adults who need help in literacy skills. A lot of people come in and they get a lot of help with individual tutoring and they end up going and getting a GED. A lot of um, assistant 
thousand dollars to do a new TV area in the line and buy some TV materials and probably do some programming along with that. We should be hearing about that soon. We applied for a make piece grant for um, a couple of computer stations in the children's room that would be early literacy stations for the younger kids and some computers for the teen center that we would hope to develop. Summer reading will be starting this year. We're going to do One World, Many Stories, and the difference will be that there will be a community program opened up to all ages. So everyone can come and join in and read in the summer and have any opportunity. And some of the gay men will actually come and be helping with the summer reading. Right now we do have uh, two job postings up. One is for a part-time library assistant, and we are also looking for some seasonal library pages, hopefully some high school students that can come in and help cover the program some of the programming times in the summer. So we're hoping we get a lot of people in the summer. And if you bet in and people that are coming in, you'll see a lot of shifting of collections and things going on. We had you know, an area that was being to be a teen room at one point in time when the library first opened, and it's really overflowing, and it's really hard to find things, and if you put more than four people in the room, you can't move. So we're moving all of that audiovisual material out into the center of the library, and we're going to try to create a kind of quiet reading area. Um, so a lot of things are shut out, so we're hoping to get that eventually, but it's a real down.
seven uh, for residents of Chicago, Marion, and Graham. And I have a call from the new that's going to be handled at the big uh, fiscal maintenance garage uh, as per the program report uh, at the last meeting. If I could just mention the rest of my Yes, I have to make one announcement. I'm going to give it now.
So by virtue of his elected position, he's resigned basically from any uh, committee. Or uh, or Right, so yeah, we perhaps fill that position too because that was some of the Oh, I thought we were talking about the other. See, I can't hear anything down here. Are you talking about the budget? The ad, oh, the ad hoc. That's what you're talking about. Are you asking? Did you say that ad hoc means you talked about those budget? Ad hoc budget? Right, right. Right now, this is what I just mentioned. It's up to this person. In other words, you can meet them and not. Yeah. And then we'll work it out later on how we're going to have a meeting together. But whenever you come back to the board, then we can decide if we're going to have a meeting with the school committee yeah. Mr. Chairman, as much as I appreciate the spirit and the intent of this document, and I, and I, I applaud you and Mr. Bonds uh, for, for attempting something like that. It does raise concern in my mind uh, with respect to potential uh, round robin discussions, violation of the open meeting law. Now, I may be you know, making a little too much of it, um, but it seems to me we're including all of the members of the school committee and all of the members of the board select in one fashion or another. I'd like to get some clarification, uh, maybe from town council, to make sure before we engage in something like this. Right now, it's a casual meeting. You can talk with whatever you want. You can just say, I like your soup, your word. What did you eat last night? Or uh, I don't get the movies. So, uh, no, I certainly. I certainly. If we have to have a meeting, you can get together with the board and we can address it. No, I, I do have to have a meeting and I, we will uh, continue with it. Mr. Chairman, I certainly understand. As I said, I, I applaud your effort and I applaud Mr. Fonz's effort in this matter. But I would like to uh, request through you that we get a pen in the council to make sure that we're not violating the open meeting law. Okay, well, okay. 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 Okay.